I have created a full controller that uses nothing but sign language and facial expressions as the inputs. Yes, it's horrible to use and extremely hard to get anything done, but that's what makes it so great. And that's why, at the end of the video, I'll announce $500 worth of bounties for using this controller. But first, let me show you exactly how I created it. Computer vision has always been a subject that fascinated me. I find it so extremely cool that a computer can take a stream of data and recognize objects, motions, and even facial expressions. The applications for this are unlimited, and I know I had to choose one. First, let's start tracking the hands. Luckily, this is super easy in Python. We use the CV2 and MediaPipe libraries. We basically take a screen cap of our webcam, feed that to MediaPipe, tell it to locate our hands, then it returns an array of 3D points representing a bunch of different landmarks on our hands, basically giving us a skeleton of sorts. From those points, we can write algorithms to detect different things. The first detail I decided to detect was how many fingers were up on both hands. This, as you can imagine, is pretty straightforward. We just see if the tip of our finger is located above the knuckle, and if so, the finger is considered up. But this algorithm has a problem. It doesn't consider the orientation of the hand, so if the hand is upside down, the fingertip is technically located above the knuckle in 3D space. But I doubt you find a person that would consider these fingers up. But since I'm not planning on using my fingers upside down, we can just ignore this. I was thinking you could extend the line out from the knuckle to the tip to check if it's close to a line extended from the wrist to the knuckle. But if you can think of a better algorithm for this, please argue in the comments. So we can now map different functions to numbers of fingers up. To control games like this, I just took the count, converted it to a corresponding key, and pressed that button in Python. Since we're using the count of fingers up, we get 10 different possible buttons, being able to press two at a time. We could get two to the 10 possible inputs this way if we made every unique combination of fingers its own input, but if you've ever tried to hold only a ring finger up, you'd know it's not easy. So we now have the basic implementation of our controller up and running, but I wanted to make it more advanced scanning for more features other than just numbers of fingers held up. So I decided to try to detect different signs from ASL. I also didn't want to use any existing algorithms for this and try to come up with my own version of it to see how it compared. The way I went about this was to make the sign I intended to check for, save the position of all the points on my hand multiple times, then analyze the relationship between the points in another program. I only checked for the distance between the tips of my fingers and my palm, which seemed to work fine, but checking another relationship between the two, such as angle, would only serve to further increase the accuracy of detection. Since the distance between my fingertips and palm depend on how far my hand away is from the camera, I had to find a method to normalize the lengths. So I divided by the length of my last pinky bone, which is a constant to basically get the amount of pinky bone the tips of my fingers were away from my palms. Now in the main program, we check the points to see if the distances match the ones we found in the C-shape, averaged with a tolerance. As we can see now, it pretty much works with 100% accuracy if I have my hand in about the same orientation as I did when I captured the samples. You might be thinking, since I use distance, there's an entire circle my fingertips could be in that would fit the distance, and you'd be right. But since my fingers can't bend backwards or go below my palm, I didn't bother to implement a fix for this. <laughs> Obviously this is a pretty terrible way to check for an entire dictionary of signs, but since I only wanted to do one or two, it'll do. A much better way would be to train a model off of tons of input data, but that's hard and... Uh... Using this process, we can put in a bunch of different signs for different inputs, but I'm not going to bother to do this since there's still a couple more things I want to detect for, including facial expressions. I thought it would be really funny if in order to attack, I had to get angry. <laughs> Daddy's gonna get really angry! So we have to scan my face, determine the emotion, and if angry, click attack. Sounds hard, right? Well, actually it's also extremely easy. Using another library called DeepFace, we send a function to capture the webcam, and it returns an array containing a calculated percentage of your emotions. If the dominant one is anger, we use the same function from earlier to press a different button. Another detection I wanted to implement was an open mouth. We basically do the same thing as the finger up detection. We use media pipe to create a face mesh, check if the distance between the upper and lower lip is above a threshold, then return true or false based on the distance. Combining all of these together gives us plenty of buttons to control all sorts of games. Creating the control scheme is fairly simple, but there are very few important things to note. In a game like Dark Souls, which I intend to play with this controller, you have two types of button inputs, either a tap or a sustained hold. Taps are used for actions such as rolling, attacking, or using an item. Held buttons are used for actions such as walking. I was running into quite a few roadblocks getting these two to work together, but I got it all functioning by designating my left hand to the held buttons. All we do is press down a designated key and keep it held until the finger changes, so no interruptions to the main program are warranted. Clicking buttons I found to be quite a bit trickier. 
I tried just having a press followed by an immediate release, but either the game didn't register it or it had a strange behavior, working only some of the time. I know I had to hold the button down for longer, but including a sleep between the press and release would slow the rest of the program down. But this is quickly resolved by just executing the press, sleep, and release in a separate thread. We also have to implement a cooldown for these, as without it, the button would get absolutely mashed. Here's the mapping I ended up going with, providing me all the necessary buttons to have an ideal experience playing Dark Souls 3. It's really hilarious and difficult playing in this manner, but at the same time also extremely entertaining. If you'd like to see me using this control scheme beating Udex Gundir, the first boss of Dark Souls 3, check out my brand new channel, BK Turnery. I will be posting the testing of my dumb projects over there instead of here so I don't make the videos overly long as well as the tutorials to get the projects up and running on your own machine. No, dude. Oh, it... Dude, what? I'm actually flabbergasted why I won't lock on. Playing this way makes me pretty irritable, as you can tell. It is not fun. And since I want to see you guys play this way, and also create a stronger sense of community, I'm announcing $500 worth of bounties playing in this manner. I'll show the bounties on screen right now, which mostly consist of Dark Souls 3 boss slings, but I've included two Spelunky 2 bounties since that's my all-time favorite game. If you'd like to compete and read the rest of the rules, join my brand new Discord server, which will be in the description below. Some final thoughts I'll put here before the video ends. This control scheme can hit some stutters and even crash occasionally, and I think it's 100% due to the emotion processing. I had to limit the amount of times I was calling the function that analyzed that, as every time I did, it would hiccup a little bit, which is obviously going to make a fast-paced game like Dark Souls pretty unplayable. And I know I clickbaited a little bit, calling this a sign language controller, <laughs> depending on the title name I end up going with, but the sign language is just a proof of concept for an algorithm I could think up myself. Actually, processing the signs was a lot more calculation intensive than I thought it would be, and for real-time activities like playing video games, especially Dark Souls, I needed real-time controls, like counting fingers up. Also, thanks so much for the support on my file storage of Minecraft video. It's actually insane to me I reached 1 million views on YouTube. That's an accomplishment I never thought I would get to. Since those wacky file storage videos do so well, I'm thinking of splitting up the project showcases into different series, including a harder drive series, where I try to find the absolute weirdest and worst manners of file storage possible. Also talking about various encryption slash compression algorithms that I find neat and want to show off. Let me know what you think of this idea in the comments. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, I have more projects cooking up for the future, so make sure to click that subscribe button. It was a pretty quick one, but I still thought it was pretty fun to implement. I'm really excited to see some competition with these bounties, and I think it'll be really fun to interact with you guys in the Discord. Anyways, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Bye!